Hello there everybody and welcome to another video and as you've seen from the title this one is the review on the DJ models Kerno Model Rail Centre GWR 1361 class uh, which is obviously a GWR saddle tank locomotive. Now the 1361s were a small class of five tank locomotives uh, of an 060 design. They were shunting engines built by Swindon Works in 1910. They were designed with dock work shunting and mineral rail railway traffic in mind hence why they had such a sh short wheelbase. Uh, unusual for churchward designs, they had a saddle tank and allen valve gear rather than the internal cylinders and valve gear and pannier tanks common at the, of the time, and a whole Great Western, really. Um, though churchward is credited with the design, it was his junior draftsman Harold Holcroft who actually did the work. One survives from the five, the others being withdrawn between 1961 and 1962. And now onto the packaging. As you can see, we've got their old school style um, packaging, really, from the likes of Dapwell and Helgen, where it's a thick card out apart with a foam inlays and an ice cube packaging inside that. It just really well protects the model, really. Um, as you can see, it's exquisitely branded uh, in the Kerno Model Rail Centre logo style with the four um, tracks. I believe that's in Cornwall flag style, or it could be Kent. It's not where I'm from, so do forgive me. Um, but you can see it's really well packaged. Um, it's a lovely little touch. Uh, it's similar to the Hatton's packaging now. Um, and you can see that those foam inlays really do protect the ice cube, which a lot of other manufacturers just do the ice cube from. You can see we've got instructions there, which are very good. The exploded diagram is very good, so is the history on the locomotive uh, and the DCC fitting part. However, um, I have had some issues with the instructions and I'll tell you about those a little bit later on. To start the review of the actual locomotive off, we'll start with the extra details. Uh, we've got vat pipes, couplings, fire irons and lamps. This, these are two really good detail packs really. Um, obviously the bit that we've got coming around now with all the fire irons and the various shovels and picks and things is an exquisite touch. Um, I really like that. I believe Kerno do it for all their exclusive models. And also the fact we get lamps which can interact with the uh, lamps, uh, the lamp hooks rather, on the locomotive. That's a really nice touch. And along with the various different um, vacuum pipes and things like that. Quite common, really, for locomotives, especially this price tag. Um, but yeah, it's all around just really nice to have them. The couplings as well is a really good touch as well, the cosmetic couplings. Now onto the bit that people actually care about. Um, the details that are actually fitted to the model. Now, supposedly, using the instructions, you can get into the cab. However, I have tried, uh, and it just doesn't seem to go whether mine's manufacturing fault or not, I don't know. Uh, but inside that cab, um, it's really well detailed. There's floor detail, brass work, doors, which is a really nice touch on these small tanks. Backmen uh, don't model their doors open um, on their panny tanks and things like that. Um, the handbrake's really well modelled. It's a really well modelled cab. Um, I believe the cab roof is designed to be taken off so you can fit figures. However, I think you probably could squeeze figures in there normally. I certainly will. Um, they just won't be Great Western. But yeah, um, the cab is really, really well done. As much as it pains me to say I can't get in. And that was the issue with the instructions that I mentioned before. And now onto the details for the actual locomotive. You can see on the back there we've got the grills and you can see as we're coming round on the front there we've got glazing, we've got a lifting hook for the tank which was used when they went back to Swindon for an overhaul uh, to lift the tank up which is a really nicely moulded feature. I believe it's separately fitted actually but uh, it's a really well really well modelled piece. Um, coupling hooks, lamp irons, handrails, loads of rivets. I'm not sure whether this light's showing it properly but we've got them on the buffer beam on the running board, on the smoke box, all along the tank and on the cab as well. Um, smoke box door dart separately fitted to be expected. Uh, tool holders at the rear. Um, raised cab numbers. Um, I don't believe they're etched because I can't see any evidence of that. They do seem to be a little bit raised but it's a really well done feature that is. Um, We've also got removable coal load, uh, although this does expose wire beneath, so it would take a little bit of modification in order to model a low coal load, uh, although that's pretty standard really for um, models like this. Um, the smoke box door dart is a little bit bendy. Um, due to the DCC fitting style, I uh, pulled the dart um, instead of being uh, 
downwards, it was pretty much 90 degrees uh, set in straight, which wasn't nice, it was a bit scary, but uh, the plastic's clearly moulded in such a way that you can move it about a little bit, but uh, that is a slight issue, especially as you are trying to pull the smoke box door out for the DCC fitting. Um, now I ended up using a pair of tweezers just to pull that out. Um, and also there's very little metal work. The only metal work is on the wheels and nothing else, which is a bit disappointing considering the price tag of this locomotive RRP. The lack of metal work is an issue with all DJ models. Models. Um, this weighs in at 131 kilograms, uh, grams rather, not kilograms, that would have been an awfully heavy locomotive uh, in 176 scale. But um, yeah, weighing in at 131 grams, it's a bit disappointing considering that the Hornby W4 Packet weighs in at 130 grams and the B2 is pushing on 180 grams. Um, I believe it's 171. Um, now that's awfully disappointing considering that these two are very similar sort of size locomotives and uh, it's something that I will bring in a little bit later on. Uh, but yeah, that weight is a little bit of an issue. Maintenance of the model, it's not designed to be serviced very much at all really. Um, servicing is really hard, you can't really get inside properly. It's just been designed so you can DCC fit it through the front using the smoke box door, which is a really nice feature, but you do need tweezers to get the smoke box door off uh, and also to uh, actually pull the circuit board out. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's just not designed to be serviced and it's a little bit disappointing that it is so because it means that the model might have a very long life compared to other models and especially now people have got Triang models which are pushing on 60, 65 years then it's a little bit disappointing that Kerno or DJ Models, whoever made the design call on this, I believe it was DJ, because um, this is pretty in line with their other models, uh, decided not to make it easy to service. But um, that was their design decision. We won't know whether it's a good one or a bad one until much later on. As you can see, we've got a running on the rolling road there. I did want to run it on the wagon works, which you can just see there. However, the track work's not kept brilliantly, it's been in a shed for a couple of months, so I need to do some TLC on it. So, the locomotive is just running on the rolling road in the fiddle yard. As you can see, it's smooth. Um, I've got it on speed step 5 here. A lot of this will be to do with the decoder. Um, it's obviously a relatively specialised one. It's a Backman one, which is very, very small. I believe it's an N-gauge chip. Um, very expensive. Uh, nearly £30 RRP, I got it for 25 uh, so that's obviously got a lot to do with the smooth running, but on DC it was also a very smooth runner. Um, I'm just going to run it up to speed step 10 from speed step 5, which we were on, on my uh, Gauge Master Prodigy. Um, yeah, that's not a nice noise, is it? It almost sounds like a turbocharger spooling up or a supercharger. Um, obviously that's quite that looped quite quick for a uh, 060 tank locomotive, so it would probably be pushing it anyway. So let's go to the other end of the scale, let's drop down to speed step one. It doesn't sound happy but it does do a very nice crawl um, as you can see there. I'm just going to run it up though. I'm going to run up to speed step five just so you can see that valve gear which is not great western at all but it's really nice. It's quite mesmerizing really. Um, really nicely done that. Um, as I've said I'm disappointed that there's not as much metal work on this probably as there should be. Um, especially for the RRP, which brings me on to price, which is the next thing. I got it for 70 quid, um, when there was a bit of a price war with rails in there, 1361, uh, which was 80 quid on the rails sale, so uh, Kerno sold theirs for 70. Um, good for the consumer, not probably good for business on either behalf, in fairness. Um, but 70 quid is a very fair price for one of these. Um, it's about the RRP of uh, the first run of Ruston's. And I think it's a very fair price. There is some issues with the model, I won't lie. Um, in fact, you can't get into the cab when it's advertised as such. You can't service it. Um, and it's a little bit noisy. Uh, and incidentally, this has been running for about four hours now. Um, I gave it a proper running in yesterday. Um, and it's had some more running this morning. Uh, so this is probably about as good as it's ever going to run. Um, but yeah, the RRP for this is actually quite shocking. It's the £159.95 RRP, which is mental for 
for an 040, uh, for an 060 tank locomotive. Now, that is horrendously expensive. I wouldn't touch one of these for one of those prices. Uh, I believe that they are being sold for about the going rates about £135 um, time of filming, which is very, very expensive. It does bring us on to the next point, though, which is the marketplace. Um, now, the obvious bit is, the obvious contender is the Halgen model. I don't have one of those, but by the people I've spoken to or seen with the Halgen model, um, they seem to think that the Kerno one comes out on top, detail-wise. Um, but for outside cylinder 040, 060 locomotives, I'm afraid it doesn't. This does. Spin it round, just so it's got a nice loop. There we go. The Hornby B2, the Peckett, stunning model. Uh, if you do want to have a look at a review of one of these, I will leave a link to my mate A.D. Pullen. He did a really good review on one of these. Uh, but yeah, it's a cheaper RRP, it's around the £100 mark. Um, I think the new run are about 112 but go to the retailers and they'll be around the £100 mark. Uh, that's obviously for the second run. Um, but yeah, there's so much more metal work on one of these. The motor's not as noisy. Um, you don't have to worry about the maintenance side of it. The body comes off. Um, and if you are worried about the coal load, you can fit quite a good uh, coal load into the back of here. Um, but yeah, all in all, I think the packet does show what the 1361 could have been if there was more die cast involved. Involved, As I mentioned earlier in the review, it's also heavier. Um, but yeah, all in all, that's it for this review really. I'm not sure whether I'll do any more reviews. I'd, I've quite enjoyed doing this in fairness. Uh, I used to do reviews quite a bit, but uh, bar the last one, <laughs> which was a Halogen 05, I didn't really think many of them were any good. Um, but yeah, something that I will be doing to mine is I'll be getting rid of the Great Western emblems from it. I'll just make it a generic tank and it'll uh, live its life on a culinary layouts or industrial layouts depending on what I build. Um, I'll be keeping the cab side numbers because I believe the 15XX that went into culinary usage uh, kept its cab side numbers. Um, so I'll be keeping that. I'll be keeping the nice blue, uh, the nice green rather. And I'll also be keeping the uh, older style front smoke box to them because um, I think that's quite a nice touch. And I believe the um, Taff Vale tank uh, had its uh, Great Western style smoke box door in a NCB service. So that'll be a nice touch. Um, so yeah, all in all, I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, I hope to see you guys again very soon. If you don't want to see any layout updates on the Wagon Works locomotive, the um, layout this locomotive sitting on, uh, they're on my channel, uh, so do go check those out, and I shall see you guys again very, very soon. Oh, one last thing before everyone goes. I've started a podcast uh, with fellow YouTuber and modeler uh, Luke Noble. Um, it's called the Train Crash Podcast. It's uh, been born from our um, Instagram live streams, really. Um, but yeah, please do go and check that out. Um, go and have a look at it. Um, we're hoping to develop quite a bit from it. So yeah, please do go check out Train Crash Podcast on YouTube and Train Crash Pod on Instagram. And uh, while I'm here and plugging things, uh, my Instagram is Heapton Colliery. Yeah, cheers. See you later.